for using IELTS listening test. There is a good news for you guys. Now you can practice unlimited speaking tests on our application Baby Code. I know, I know. Some people will say कि मैं तो अपने friends के साथ practice कर लेता हूँ. मैं अपने institute में रोज test देता हूँ. या मैं Miller के सामने practice करता हूँ. लेकिन रोज एक या दो test देना is not enough to clear IELTS. और आपके friends और Miller आपको valuable feedback कभी नहीं दे सकते. लेकिन अगर आप Baby Code application use करते हो, तो आप कहीं भी और कभी भी unlimited test दे सकते हो. Baby code pe practice karna is like having a personal teacher. App will take exam like a real examiner. After test, you can check your grammar, fluency or pronunciation mistakes. Even you can check your band score. This app will provide you free test every day. So do not forget to try link in the description. But if you need more test access, it will just cost you $3.99. Wait, if you use my promo code IELTS50, that will give you even more 50 rupees discount. Now it's like a one time meal money, but this will help you to crack your IELTS exam. The test is in four part part one, part two, part three, and part four. Now look at part one. Part one You hear two travelers, Lilith and Alex, having a discussion in a cafe. First, you have some time to look at questions one to five. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 5. Hey, Alex, are you okay? I was worried something happened. Oh, sorry for being late. I drove down the wrong highway and got lost. Don't worry, it's only been 20 minutes. Actually, I just looked at some Austin tourist websites. I got some tea. You want anything? Yeah, I think I'll have some tomato juice. It's just what I need right now. Yes, it's really hot and humid out right now. I think I'll get iced tea this time around. So you went on the wrong highway, huh? Yeah, for sure. I've never driven in this area before, right? So after I pick up the rental car from the airport, I try to follow the map to the downtown area here. Unfortunately, there was a lot of road construction going on, and I went south on the highway instead of going north. After a few minutes, I realized I was going the wrong way, so I exited the highway and came back up here. Well, I'm glad you're here, okay? Did everything go well at the car rental place? Oh, yeah, it went very well. The business owner was kind of a strange person, really tall and thin. He had a bushy beard and moustache. He was also wearing a cowboy hat. I'd never quite seen anyone quite like that before. I guess every place in the world has eccentric people. Yeah, definitely. But he told me about all these great places to eat around here. He said they have some really great Mexican food in the area. That's great. I haven't had that in such a long time. We definitely have to go to a place for dinner. Well, I want some more iced tea. How about you? Yeah, I need to order still. You know what? I think I'll get one of their sandwiches too. They look really good. Okay, let's order then. Before you hear the rest of the discussion, you have some time to look at questions 6 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 6 to 10. Now then, what are we going to do today? I was thinking it would be nice to see the state capital and then maybe the university. Well, according to the website, let me see. The state capital has tours only on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays. Yeah, if we went there, it would be much better to go on a guided tour. Oh, wait. Yes, there are tours on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays, but also on Saturdays. The university site lists a lot of places that are interesting, so maybe we can spend most of the day at both the capital and there. 
We should definitely go to the lake after that as well, and even spend the night camping there. Great plan. Is there anything else you found online? Yeah, I know you studied biology, so I was thinking that the park would be good. They have a pretty unique collection of trees and plants. They are open Monday through Saturday, so we can go there any time. There's also the mountain. There are some photos on the website. It looks like they have some great views of the city, and I definitely want to do some hiking. Yes, we would have to take another day for the park and the mountain. But you know, the guy at the rental place was talking about the weather. It seems that there will be a pretty bad storm coming tomorrow. We need to plan around that since it won't be good to be outside when it comes. Certainly not. It's not worth hiking somewhere if the weather is terrible. You know, we can go to the park and the mountain today and then go to the indoor places, the Capitol and the university tomorrow. It'll be hard to get around in the rain, but at least we'll be inside. I agree. By the way, how much are these places? All of them are free except for the park. Wait, I'm not sure about the Capitol tour. Yeah, they don't charge anything for the guided tours. All right, then. We'll go hiking first and then relax at the park. Then we can camp at the lake. We'll go to the capital and the university tomorrow. Yeah, this is one of the best universities in the country, especially known for their art programs. Really? Yeah, I heard about that. They have some art galleries there, too, ones with some good modern art. Wow, it seems like that's a lot for us. Yeah, I'm really excited about camping at the lake. The sunsets are supposed to be beautiful there. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part two. Part two. You're going to hear a talk by a tour guide about the local history of Harbour Town. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 15. Now listen to the first part of the talk and answer questions 11 to 15. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the historic downtown area of Harbortown. I'm going to give a presentation on the history of the area before I let you all go. There's great weather today, so I'll try to keep this short. So, from this room, you can see most all of the historic area. This intersection is where the city was first founded, about 350 years ago. The San Gabriel River is wide and deep, and it was an excellent waterway for the movement of goods. Harbor Town used to produce lots of beef and oranges. Before the city grew, there was lots of open land for grazing and planting fruit trees. They traded these products with other towns and cities. The weather in this region is excellent for growing oranges because there are warm summers and mild winters. Citrus fruits can't survive in places where there is severe frost. At the height of citrus cultivation, there were over 500 orchards growing citrus fruit. Unfortunately, this fertile land also had lots of oil underneath it. In the rest of the country, new technology required the energy found in fossil fuels. After the first oil wells were tapped, agriculture gradually gave way to industry. The farms, Orchards and ranches that surrounded the town were replaced by new factories, cities, and roads. There is very little agriculture in the region these days, and certainly no cattle. The oil eventually ran out, of course, but other industries such as aerospace and entertainment were established. 
Well, that's a brief history of Harbortown. You can use one of the computer terminals available in the main office if you want more information. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 16 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 16 to 20. I will highlight some of the sites here just to give you an idea of what we have in the historic center of Harbor Town. You can then explore the area as you please. So, I've already mentioned the intersection where the city was first founded. The main east-west street is called Sunset Road, and the main north-south street is called Santa Monica Avenue. The central office we are in right now is at the northernmost end of Santa Monica Avenue. There are public restrooms here, as well as computer terminals that connect to the Internet. Across from the central office is the fruit market. At its height, people from all over the country came to buy fruit from the distributors there. If you travel south from the market and go past the intersection, you will see the Ranch Museum. Here you can learn about the old ranching lifestyle that was such a hallmark of our region. Now, going back to the intersection, if you go west of Santa Monica Avenue, you will find Old City Hall. It is an excellent example of the architecture of the time. In the opposite direction, going east of the main intersection, you can see Sunny Movie Studios. They don't make movies there now, of course, but it was the first company to make movies in our region. Also, the subway station is accessible from all four corners of the intersection. If you didn't take the bus here today, I am sure that is where you came from. Well, thanks again, and I hope you enjoy your visit to the historic area of Harbor Town. That is the end of Part 2. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part three. Part three. You will hear a conversation in a continuing education institute's office. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 25. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 25. Welcome. My name is Jeremy Holtz. Hello, Jeremy. I was told to come to this office and ask about your continuing education program. I'm interested in taking classes and want to know more about the program. Certainly. We have several different programs depending on your education goals and on what you are doing now. For example, we have continuing education programs for those who want to finish a degree or start a new one, and we also have a program for working adults. Well, I'm working part-time now, and I'm interested in completing a degree in business administration. I am working at a hospital, you see, but I want to change my job, either work in hospital management or have my own business. OK, that sounds great. Many students in our program want to advance in their current careers or even change them. What kind of degree do you have now? I am a registered nurse with a two-year degree. Great. First, we have to figure out where you want to take classes. We have satellite campuses all over the region. The ones at the city centre are accessible by public transportation but offer fewer course times. 
A car is the best way to attend classes at our satellite campuses in the suburbs, but they have more classrooms and therefore more courses. Well, I have been saving up for a car, but I don't have enough money to buy one yet. I think the city centre campus will be better. OK, now we have to decide which program you want to register for. We have night courses, where the classes generally run from 7 pm to 10 pm. Classes during these hours are usually once a week. There are also courses during the day that might work for you, depending on your work schedule. Well, like I said, I'm working part time and unfortunately I work during the evenings. You see, I'm living at my parents' house right now. My father is quite ill, actually, and since my mother works normal hours, I take care of him during the day and my mom takes care of him in the evening when I work. The city centre campus doesn't offer classes during the weekends? No, the suburban one does, but unfortunately, there are no classes during that time at the city centre campus. You know, maybe the online courses will be better for you. Do you have access to the internet? Yes, I have a computer at home. That might be the best way for you then. It's still a new program. We're still working out the bugs, but it will allow you to work part time, take care of your father, and take classes. The completion of your degree will probably take longer, however. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 26 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 26 to 30. So, how exactly does this work? I'm slightly nervous about studying again. It's been years since I've been a student. Yes, it can be a bit daunting at times. Continuing your education and improving yourself are well worth the effort. Actually, before you start taking online classes, there are several refresher courses that you are required to take. What kind of courses are those? These are especially made for the returning adult student. We understand that education is just one of a number of priorities for those that take classes with us. The refresher courses teach you how to manage time and juggle between different areas in your life. Techniques like writing down your daily schedule and ways to avoid procrastinating are talked about. Also, there is one course that reviews basic study skills, like the most efficient way to read the course text as well as basic academic writing. I think that would be really helpful for me. I enjoyed studying when I was going to school, but I definitely need some tips on how to manage my classes along with the rest of my life. Many students I've seen are in a similar position. They have to balance both their work and family life with their education. It's not easy, but it is very rewarding for the ones that finish their education all the way through. OK, so how do I register for the classes? You need to go online to do that. I will give you a brochure with the appropriate web address. You can choose which course modules to take online. You can go through them as time allows. There is even a place to keep track of progress towards your degree. All right. Can I ask then about the cost of the online courses? They are cheaper than classes at either campus, of course. Online, you'll see a number of different ways to pay. You can pay up front for each course module you take or pay over a number of months. The latter method of payment will probably be better for me. Are the textbooks and other course materials expensive? No, not at all, actually. With all online courses, the relevant materials are included free of charge. They are available to download after you register. That sounds great. Thank you so much. No problem. My contact information is also in the brochure. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
Now it turns to part four. Part four. You'll hear a lecturer talking about the reintroduction of grey wolves into the wild. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. I am going to talk about one of my favourite animals today, the grey wolf. Similar to other top-level predators, like the shark, wolves sometimes have a bad reputation. It is true they do sometimes attack herds of livestock that people depend on. In nature, however, grey wolves are a critical part of the ecosystem. Wolves are larger than the average dog. They also have a keener sense of smell since they are not a domesticated species and still live and hunt in the wild. They hunt in small packs and actually have a sophisticated social system. Scientists have observed that wolf packs are well defined by hierarchies. There is one hierarchy for male wolves and one for female wolves. At the top of each is an alpha male and an alpha female. They are not leaders of the pack according to the human definition but they seem to have special privileges compared to the other wolves. This privilege has to do more with reproducing rather than having more food. Any pair of wolves in a pack may breed, but it is usually the alpha pairs wolf pups that are the most successful. Other pairs may not be able to raise their offspring to maturity, especially when there are limited resources. The alpha status among wolves is not permanent. Wolves are free to challenge the alpha male. These challenges are not necessarily physical fights, but are mostly ritual confrontations that involve bluffing and posturing. There is always the potential for violence, though, and sometimes the jockeying for the alpha status is fatal for one of the participants. The range of the grey wolf and its subspecies used to be quite extensive, almost the entire continents of Asia and North America, and the whole of Europe as well. They are now found mostly in Canada, Alaska, the northern reaches of Eurasia and a few other scattered pockets. In some parts of the world, grey wolves have actually been reintroduced into the wild. Many people were opposed to these programs at first because they thought it would cause economic hardship for livestock owners. In the United States, local ranchers around the Yellowstone National Park area refused to allow any wolves back. Supporters of the program knew that without cooperation from ranchers, the wolves would likely be shot and killed. Those supporters knew how important the program was and agreed to compensate ranchers for livestock lost to wolves. This important compromise paved the way for the reintroduction of wolves to Yellowstone in 1995, where they hadn't been seen for over 70 years. The reintroduction has been a great success. Studies show that the biodiversity within the park has increased and is sustaining itself. After the last grey wolves in the park were killed in 1926, the population of elk and deer soared, decreasing the number of plants available to beaver and moose. The beaver eventually became extinct there. The population of other predator species, like the coyote, exploded. This, in turn, caused rodent populations to crash. This crash led to a decline in bird species, like hawks and eagles. These negative trends have all reversed since the wolves came back. As a result, Yellowstone National Park is a better, healthier place. The local economy also benefits because people are not only interested in seeing more biodiversity at the park, but also the wolves themselves. This brings in tens of millions of more dollars annually to local lodgings, restaurants and stores. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers. 
Thank you for using IELTS listening test. There is a good news for you guys. Now you can practice unlimited speaking test on our application Baby Code. I know, I know. Some people will say कि मैं तो अपने friends के साथ practice कर लेता हूँ. मैं अपने institute में रोज test देता हूँ. या मैं mirror के सामने practice करता हूँ. लेकिन रोज एक या दो test देना is not enough to clear IELTS. और आपके फ्रेंड्स और मिरर आपको वैल्यूएबल फीडबैक कभी नहीं दे सकते लेकिन अगर आप बेबी कोड एप्लीकेशन यूज करते हो तो आप कहीं भी और कभी भी अनलिमिटेड टेस्ट दे सकते हो बेबी कोड पे प्रैक्टिस करना इज लाइक हैविंग अ पर्सनल टीचर एप विल टेक एग्जाम लाइक अ रियल एग्जामिनर आफ्टर टेस्ट यू कैन चेक योर ग्रामर फ्लुएंसी और प्रोनाउंसिएशन मिस्टेक्स इवन यू कैन चेक योर बैंड स्कोर This app will provide you free test every day. So do not forget to try link in the description. But if you need more test access, it will just cost you 399. Wait, if you use my promo code IELTS50, that will give you even more 50 rupees discount. Now it's like a one-time meal money, but this will help you to crack your IELTS exam.